Russia is on the verge of capturing its first Ukrainian settlement in eight months. Avdivka in eastern Ukraine is home to some of the war's fiercest fighting and is seen as critical territory by both Kyiv and Moscow. Before the war broke out, around 32,000 people lived in Avdivka. Now, fewer than 1,000 remain. There isn't a building still intact, so whoever is still there is forced to seek safety in basements and bomb shelters. The city is in the industrial Donbass region of Ukraine and known for its coke plant, which produces fuel for industrial work like iron ore smelting. The plant would be a welcome addition to the Russian war machine, but in the meantime, it's providing Ukraine with one of the last defensible positions in the area. Ukrainian soldiers say Russia is launching near constant meat wave attacks, a tactic of trying to overwhelm defenses through sheer numbers. Despite the huge casualty rate associated with these tactics, one soldier with Ukraine's 47th Mechanized Brigade told Radio Liberty that Russian soldiers were literally crawling over their own dead comrades to keep advancing. British military intelligence said the fighting in Avdivka contributed to some of the highest Russian casualty rates of the entire war. Even Russian mill bloggers, who face stiff scrutiny from the Kremlin, acknowledge the high Russian losses. But nevertheless, the Russians persist. Vladimir Putin stressed in late January the significant role Avdivka plays in Moscow's plan to consolidate power and control in the Donbass, one of the regions illegally annexed by Russia but still not fully under its control. Ukraine is holding on so they can deny Russia the battlefield victory, but its forces are running critically low on both manpower and ammunition for small arms and artillery. Ukraine is able to fire just 2,000 artillery shells a day. Russia is firing around 10,000. The United States and some European countries keep pledging to up their output of 155mm artillery shells, but so far production is failing to meet demand. Ukraine is not being too picky, though, and says it will take most anything anyone can spare, like the thousands of old CRV-7 rockets Canada has marked for disposal. The head of Ukraine's intelligence services said instead of spending millions of taxpayer dollars to essentially throw them away, Canada could give the rockets to Ukraine. The CRV-7s can be used by Ukrainian attack helicopters or ground-launched, essentially filling in for traditional artillery. The CRV-7s can also be broken down by their component parts and repurposed to use in other areas, like Ukraine's drone industry. Ukraine is also supposed to finally start taking possession of the ground-launched small-diameter bombs the U.S. promised to send last March and those could conceivably be used to help defend Avdivka as well. But there is only one supply route for Ukrainian troops to use, and there's no guarantee the next Russian meat wave attack won't be the one to finally break Ukraine's defenses.